Hello, welcome to a presentation on APA Citation Style by the OU Writing Center. I'm Dr. Ashton foley Shram, the Associate Director of the Writing Center, and I'll be your guide through this presentation. In this presentation, we're going to focus on APA Citation Style, the style preferred for many disciplines in the social sciences. We'll talk first about three different ways you can incorporate sources into your own papers. Then, we'll look at some APA basics before turning to what in-text citations look like for APA. After that, we'll talk about the APA reference page, and we'll end with the contact information for the Writing Center and some APA-related writing resources. If you have questions about the content of this presentation, please be sure to contact the Writing Center so our consultants can assist you. Our contact information is at the end of this presentation. First, a lot of students wonder why we even have so many different academic writing styles and why these different citation styles matter. When a writer uses a uniform and consistent style, readers can focus on the message the writer is conveying instead of the formatting. It helps people hear what you're saying rather than getting lost in how you're saying it. Using a uniform and consistent style also allows your reader to scan the text quickly to find key ideas, results, and sources. This is helpful when doing research. We've all done it, trying to figure out if a source works for our particular project. Overall, style serves the function of enabling ideas to flow in a logical order, ensuring sources are credited properly, and establishing a predictable and consistent organizational structure. American academic writing really values ownership of original ideas, and so it's an expected part of this culture that we give credit to other people's work. Next, we'll look at how to use sources in your writing. There are generally three different ways you can incorporate outside sources into your own work. The three main ways are by using direct quotes from a source, creating your own paraphrase of a source, and by summarizing a source. Different citation styles prefer different ways of source use, so we'll address what APA prefers in the next few slides. As always, though, follow the directions provided by your instructor. In general, APA does not love direct quotes. If you paraphrase or summarize information, APA believes it shows that you understand the source better. There are some instances where it's important to use a direct quote, however. These include when reproducing an exact definition, when an author has said something memorably or succinctly, and when you want to respond to exact wording. Quotations must be identical to the original text using a narrow segment of the source. They must match the source document word for word or clearly indicate a change to the original text using square brackets. And the quotation must be attributed to the original author. You need to use page numbers in APA when using a direct quote. If no page number is available, use some other marker to indicate an exact location within the text for the quote. This could be a chapter number, volume number, heading name, or something else. This is different from paraphrasing and summarizing, and I see students forget page numbers with direct quotes a lot. If the original author said it so well it can't be restated or something would be lost if you restated it, then go ahead with a direct quotation. Just don't forget to include the page number. Paraphrasing involves putting a passage from source material into your own words. A paraphrase must also be attributed to the original source. Paraphrased material is usually shorter than the original passage, taking a somewhat broader segment of the source and condensing it slightly. When you're paraphrasing, you restate someone else's ideas, but do not use their original words. Lots of students get into trouble when they think they're paraphrasing, but they keep original words or phrases from the original source. APA does not require a page number when paraphrasing, but it's allowed when including the page number would help your reader find the source, like if the material is from a longer work, like a book or edited collection. A summary is a more zoomed out view of a source. In a summary, you give the main points of the source. If you think details are important, it's better to paraphrase. Summarizing involves putting the main ideas into your own words, including only the main points. Once again, it is necessary to attribute summarized ideas to the original source. Summaries are significantly shorter than the original source and take a broad overview of the source material. Now that we've talked about direct quotes, paraphrasing, and summarizing, Let's look at some basics for APA style. For the entire paper formatted in APA, 
It should be double spaced with one inch margins on all sides. There should also be page numbers on every page. For the font, there are several options or choices. The idea is to use a font that is easy to read and that is widely accessible on a variety of platforms. Think something like a PC, a Mac, an iPad, an Android tablet, and a mobile device can all read and access the font. Finally, APA also requires a title page as part of its format, and I'll show you what goes on that next. There are several things to note when formatting a title page in APA. APA's Student Title Page Guide, which is linked at the end of this presentation, is a great resource to keep handy as you format your title page. First, as of the 7th edition, APA no longer requires a running head for student papers. If you don't know what that is, no problem. Just know that you do not need it. Next, you do need a page number at the top right corner of every page. Then, the title of your paper gets centered, put in bold, and is in title case. A couple of lines below the title, you put your name, the course, the course instructor, and the date. If your instructor asks for other information to go here, be sure to follow their directions. Finally, everything on the title page should be double spaced. As you start to write your paper, you'll need both in-text citations for any outside material you use and a works cited or reference citation at the end. Like the name suggests, the in-text citation goes within your written text. It's part of the body of your paper. The reference citation goes at the end of your paper in a reference list. In APA, the basic in-text citation is author date, which is the author's last name and the year of publication. This can go at the end of the sentence that uses the outside material as a parenthetical citation. If you use a direct quote, or have exact page numbers for a summary or paraphrase, you can also include page numbers in the parenthetical citation. As mentioned earlier, APA prefers summarizing and paraphrasing, so you likely won't use a lot of direct quotes or page numbers. I mentioned parenthetical citations with the last slide to talk about where your in-text citation can go. There are actually two major ways to do an in-text citation after you've used an outside source. One is called the parenthetical citation, where again, you put the author and date in parentheses at the end of the sentence. The other is called a narrative citation, where you use the author's name as part of your sentence and include the date in parentheses after it. This slide provides an example of each. Note that in the parenthetical citation, the author's name followed by a comma and the year is included in parentheses at the end of the sentence, followed by a period outside of the parentheses. In the narrative citation, the author's name appears at the beginning of the sentence, followed immediately by the year in parentheses. Both methods use the same paraphrased information for the same source, but present it differently. The method you choose will depend on the purpose of your writing for that citation. Is the focus on the statement itself or on the fact that this is the author's statement? No matter how you incorporate outside material, make sure to give credit where credit is due by including a citation. Next, we'll move away from in-text citations to the APA reference page. The reference page is where you list the complete source information for each of the resources you've cited in your paper. Since we only use the author, date, and sometimes page number in text, the reference page is where we can include everything else. First, there's some basic formatting for the reference page. In addition to being double spaced, just like the rest of your paper, the reference page starts on a new page, has the word reference or references at the top, centered and bolded. It lists all of your sources in alphabetical order by author last name, and it uses a hanging indent where the second and subsequent lines of any entry are indented 0.5 inches which you can see on the following examples. Always use the hanging indent feature in Word or Google Docs for this. Here are some examples of reference entries that would go on your reference page. We can see examples for three types of sources, a journal article, an authored book, and a chapter in an edited collection. Since different kinds of sources have different types of publication information, you'll need to make sure you are including all relevant information 
for that type of source. Say if you're setting a book review, you'll need to make sure you're including all of the information that would allow your reader to find that specific review. Use a website like the Purdue OWL or the APA Style Guides for help citing different kinds of sources. And finally, this is what the entire references page could look like. This example shows four sources in alphabetical order. They are all double spaced and in the same font as the rest of the paper. Each entry has a hanging indent, so only the first line of the entry is justified all the way to the left. There are three different source types represented here. Source one is a book, source two is a website, and sources three and four are both articles in a scholarly journal. We've covered a lot of information in this presentation about APA citation style. First, we talked about why it's important to cite sources in your research writing. We talked about three main ways for incorporating sources into your own writing, which are by using direct quotes, by paraphrasing the original source, or by summarizing the original source. Then, we looked at some formatting basics for APA style, including how to format the title page of your paper. We discussed the basics of using an in-text citation for APA anytime you use an outside source. In-text citations are usually either parenthetical citations at the end of a sentence or are narrative citations where the author's name is worked into your own sentence. In-text citations consist of the author's last name, the year of publication, and if you have a direct quote, the page number. Finally, we looked at the formatting of the reference page, which goes at the end of your paper. The reference page includes all of the additional citation information about your sources that does not get put in text. I want to leave you with some reliable, easy to use resources that will help you as you format and cite in your own APA style paper. Many of the sources used to create this presentation come from the APA's style website. The Purdue OWL is also a trusted source for finding information about any major citation style. And of course, if you have questions about writing your paper in APA style, or if you'd like assistance, don't hesitate to reach out to us at the Writing Center. The Writing Center serves undergraduate and graduate students at the University of Oklahoma. We also serve the local Norman and OKC community. You can find us in person in Wagner Hall, room 280. Our telephone number is 405-325-2936. And our email address is writingcenter at ou.edu. You can also find information about scheduling an appointment on our website, write.ou.edu. Our website also features a new resources section that has an APA citation guide created for you by Writing Center staff. Finally, you can find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the handle at OU Writes. Thank you for watching, reading, and listening along to this presentation. This slide contains additional resources that were used to create this presentation. Finally, creating resources and presentations takes time. We would appreciate it if you could give credit where credit is due if you share this presentation. This presentation was created by Dr. Ashton foley Schram, Associate Director at the University of Oklahoma's Writing Center, created 2023 under Creative Commons license BYNCSA. This license allows reusers to distribute, remix, adapt, and build upon the material in any medium or format for non-commercial purposes only and only so long as attribution is given to the creator. If you remix, adapt, or build upon the material, you must license the modified material under identical terms.